Welcome to this very special episode of Zine Inspiration. Uh, you might call it episode 13 and a half or something, because it's not a real interview. It's more like a catch-up between myself, Ryan, from Pocket Thought Zines, and my good pal, Craig, from Five O'Clock Zines. Craig, what's going on, buddy? Hey, how are you? I'm good, thank you. I'm good. Uh, it's been just over a year since we started this, and I think it's a perfect time to do a bit of a bit of a catch-up episode. It's our one-year anniversary show, if you will. Yeah, yeah, kind of belated. It's a little bit late, but that's... Are we still happily married? Uh, well, we were last time, your last email, but I don't know if things have changed in the last two weeks. Uh, I think we're all right. I think we're all right. All right. But COVID's been pretty stressful on our marriage, so we'll see. How. <laughs> <laughs> we do long distance like nobody else does long distance. Uh, Actually, I had a thought in COVID coming. Imagine being the person. Imagine being a person with like uh, two or three fat. Like you know, the people have two families going, and when the lockdown happened, like imagine how would you explain to the other family that you couldn't go and visit them? That would it, it, there you go right there. There's your premise for your next short story. I think so, but I, I, I I've been kind of playing with that idea for a while, and it's just like, especially when it, you know, it's like, what are you gonna do? Like there must be people in that situation. Yeah. Well, speaking of your next short story, that's what we call a segue. Uh, what have you been working on lately, Craig? Uh, what have I been doing a lot of writing lately? Um, I've been working on a short story, kind of, or something that I'm hoping to make longer. I'm roughly around five thousand words at the moment, and I'm kind of I want to push for like twenty to thirty thousand. Um, also, I've been writing some articles for uh, for for Federal Publications uh, right. on, on, on like some online articles uh, and also just some general writing. Um, yeah. What about yourself? What have you been working on? Zines, zines, more zines, all the time zines. Um, gosh, I, I've had some good zines this year already. Uh, stuff I'm, I'm really excited about. Uh, Sweet 16 is, is really good. She's spitting. She's, she's like a, cool punk chick she's like fuck you and just spit and it's uh there's there's a lot of fun in this one i really i'm really happy with this uh what else i'm very very uh excited and proud of was uh pocket thoughts annual three this year this is the biggest uh issue yet it's 32 pages wow. normally 15 is 32 pages there's over 25 different zinesters from all around the world and uh i i know i sound like i'm probably beating a dead horse when i say this but what I love about it is each zinester gets their own page to do whatever they want with. So, I mean, I give them the dimensions and they can choose to fill it with art or write, like there's, that's punks around there. Um, yeah. That was me. That's uh, Lucinda. Yeah. You know, they can, some of them are just text. Like that's, uh, that's uh, Nick's from Sea Green Zines. Oh, nice. And they can do whatever they want with it as long as there's no hate speech or, you know, yeah. bullshit like that. Yeah. Um, but what I love most about it is uh, each of the contributor, each contributor of the zine gets to have a master copy of it so they can print copies to give away, trade, sell, whatever it is they want to do with it. It's just as much theirs as it is mine. Uh, so they have ownership in it, which I think is uh, very important and cool. Very cool. Very cool. Um, yeah, I guess something on, on in regards to zine, something I kind of done recently is... Uh, a little over a year ago, uh, I wrote a short story, uh, and it was published through a small micro press. And then uh, recently, I thought I wanted to re, -res re -res -re resurrect that story, so I made like a little um, a copy myself. Uh, which actually, yeah, I sent over to you. Um, I should have that right behind me somewhere. And because, as you know, or people that watch this show, is uh, I'm not very good at formatting things like that. So what I did is I just printed the the story out in an A4, uh, on an A4 page, and then I just um, printed it, the photocopier as an A3 and folded, uh, folded and stapled just to side, st uh, side stitch as usual with the staples. Um, so that was kind of fun. It was nice to get this story out again and just sort of give it some new life. Um, yeah. Cool. Cool. I'm working on a, a new one. This is, uh, this is just the cover piece for it. I mean, like, I draw big and then shrink down, right? Um, yeah. This is the, the cover for my Dr. Seuss parody called Daddy's Dating a Dirty Hoe. Yep. Yeah. Well, lots, well, 
Yeah. Goes in well with the two family thing we just talked about. <laughs> <laughs> that would be daddy's dating dirty hoes. <laughs> wow, whatever. Well, yeah, you know, two families, two two hoes. Whatever you're into. It's all in the garden. <laughs> Uh, so we've talked for a, little, for a year now, and uh, you know we've met some really cool zinesters on here. Some, some of which we've talked to before. I mean, uh, it, it certainly was uh, easy to get, say, you know, Rich and Ali on the show and and chat because you know they do this sort of thing, and it, it kind of eased us in. I think got us comfortable with doing it. But then I start to think of you know some of the zinesters that we just you know messaged out of the blue on like instagram was like hey do you want to come check out this this show with us you want to you want to do this and you know like meeting weirdo brigade was really mm -hmm. cool uh because she's pretty uh, clever and awesome uh really interesting to talk to and even recently with kate you know interviewing uh emily never was a lot of fun um uh lanier oh my god lanier was so much fun to talk to like, yeah, they, they could have for hours with the knee. I think we talked for maybe like an hour or something, and yeah, they I think so they much out of that because we just kept yeah. talking. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I'm mean, the same as you. You know, we've met some really fantastic creators. Uh, some that uh, that I never thought we'd get a chance to chat to, or or even when we began the show, I didn't really, I wasn't aware of in the Zine community, which has uh, been really good. And it's so cool to to be able to learn from from different creators, different processes. And, you know, we talk about ins inspirations a lot and, you know, I've gone out and checked out some zines just simply based on what, uh, what other zines just talk about. I still don't own a copy of Comet Bus. I'm waiting for you to send me one. Um, and it, it's, it's phenomenal, like to, to learn the different process of how they do layout or do they do it digitally. It's just, it's cool to, to try out some new ways sometimes too. Yeah, I think so. And it's been, um, you know, like something I, I guess, you know, we, we both talk about a lot is is how, um, you know, zines are often about sharing uh, your knowledge or things you know. And, and that's been one really fascinating thing also is talking to uh, someone like Punks Around, who has, uh, I think, a PhD or studying a PhD uh, and really like looking into, um, you know, Russian punk rock and things like that. And, and just really deep diving. And that's even something uh, one of our latest uh, chats was with, uh, oh, the names just slipped me, the 10, 10 horror movie, 10 horror oh, movie. Oh, uh, Emily. Yes, yes, yes. Um, so, like, just taking a deep dive into something uh, that maybe we're a little bit unfamiliar with or uh, didn't really know about and just getting, getting disease to sharing about that. So I think that's been really cool. And all the different perspectives that, that we gain from it, too. I mean, I know that we've made a point of trying to have uh, different parts of the world on the show, different types of creators, uh, people of color, LGBTQ, but even just different styles. I know that we've had cartoonists on the show. We've had, uh, you know, Dave, for instance, Lanier. We've had poets with a keel. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun because I think it was like two in the morning that we were talking to him. And it was like, he, and was, he was up. Yeah. <laughs> and he was like kind of on the couch and it was this close shot. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah. It's been interesting. Uh, yeah. And, and like the time that, uh, you know, we, uh, Survivor, okay, remember, we talked to her for a little bit. Yes, uh, yes. All the different views and perspectives, but everybody coming together in the same zine bubble uh, is, it's so inspiring. Yeah, and uh, also just how different people have come to zines. Um, there's kind of some re re uh, reoccurring sort of themes, I think, which is which is really cool and really interesting. And um, everyone seems to be getting kind of their own thing out of zines, but then also there's a bit of a consensus about what they are getting from zines and what the zines kind of gives. And there's a lot of light shining on the community. They love, they, everyone seems to, you know, really enjoy you know, the Zine community and how supportive they are, so which is really cool. Cool. Yeah. Do you, do you have a, a favorite moment from the last year? Favorite moment? Um, favorite moment? I really... Uh, I, I don't really want to, you know, just pick someone out, but I do... I did really enjoy talking to uh, Alex Reck from uh, Stolen Sharpie Generation. Uh, so, yeah. So, 
revolution. Um, I thought that was really interesting. Like they're um, they've kind of been in the zine community in the Portland zine community, uh, and they're quite deep into the Portland zine community. And uh, I thought that was really really cool to talk. To, uh, they were really really cool to talk to and get some uh, kind of a I don't know like a bit of a, a different different eyes on the knowledge of zines and things like that. You know, we're talking, you know, we're talk we've been talking to a lot of younger creators, uh, people that have been in the zine community a short time, and it was really interesting to talk to, uh, yeah, I think Alex. Almost like, uh, and, and, you know, if she's out there watching, I hope this doesn't make her feel old, but almost like a motherly figure of zines, you know? Like, she's written Stolen Sharpie Revolution, which I finally got around to reading recently. Uh -huh. uh, brilliant book if you don't have it go and, and buy it from alex um but yeah this motherly like advice almost of you know this warm feeling i don't know yeah. i'm supposed to be a writer and i don't have the words for it <laughs> no i i think i, I think i kind of know what you, you know it's it's just a, I think it's a different perspective it's someone with some experience in the zine community and has gone through kind of a lot within uh, different levels of making zines you know maybe just from photocopying to working with publishers things like that so they've kind of got a good experience and it was it was yeah i thought it was really interesting to talk to and uh yeah i'm a big fan of that one and actually i, I read uh and, and a different zine book the other day uh, i'll just i'll just get it for you okay and while you do that since i've got this right here on my bookshelf that's stolen sharpie revolution by alex rack if uh if you don't have a copy go get one yeah, definitely get one. And actually, I read uh, this this one uh, called What You Mean, What's a Zine? What you mean, what's a zine? You mean it's not pronounced zine? <laughs> what? Um, <laughs> Why have I been calling this zine inspiration this whole time? Uh, I thought so, yeah. So, um, this is quite interesting. This is... Uh, this Actually, I wrote a piece about it just, just recently, and it, it's about to come out, but... Um, it was quite interesting diving into this. It was a little different to the stolen Sharpie generation. Ah, uh, revolution. Why do I keep saying generation? Revolution. Um, but it was uh, it was just as interesting, I think. More aimed towards newer creators, I would say newer zinesters. Um, I guess the title kind of says that, you know, really introducing uh, zines to, to to new creators. But um, but yeah, really cool. I'm I'm really curious to see what the next year is going to be like in terms of who we see making zines and what new zine creators come out. Uh, Netflix put out that movie Moxie, which is all about a, a, a riot girl punk zine movement. Um, I don't know if it's available in Japan, uh, but if it is, you, you should check it out. Um, and I've I've already started to see some like some newer punk girl zines come out because of it, and th that kind of excites me because it's like. Like, let's see what you got. Like, let's yeah. just see what you got. I'm like almost salivating at, at the idea. I just ordered a bunch of them on Etsy. Uh, uh, oh, yes, right? Yeah. So hopefully I'll have them within a couple of weeks to, to go through. I, I, I'm getting several zines in my uh, mailbox every week. And I love it. I've always got something to read. And um, you do zine reviews on your Instagram. And I put them here on this YouTube channel myself. And uh it's it's pretty cool. What have you been what have you been reading lately? Um, so actually, well, lately I've been reading uh, this one, which is a, a poetry book, a poetry to like a chapbook. Uh, it's actually out through two key two key customs, um, who are kind of new in the um, in the micro press world, I guess you'd say. This is maybe issue four or something. They've put out a four. I think they make put their fifth out just recently. Um, and yeah, it's like just a little poetry chapbook, uh, which is pretty cool by uh, Clay Hunt. I'm, I'm enjoying it, but I'm only just 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 began it today, actually. Cool. And yourself, what are you reading? Uh, well, the most recent things that I've gotten, uh, the newest, uh, sometimes human, uh, by Crash. I read through it real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna give it a deeper dive because I always love Crash's stuff. Uh, and this one's like. It's thick for her. Like it's it's bigger it, than it, usual. A crash we were saying about <laughs> like we interviewed Crash as well. I forgot. Oh yeah, that was after you know, it's crazy for anybody who's watching these. So we'll do the video and then we'll stop recording and half the time we'll still continue to talk yeah. for about twenty minutes with the guests and just shoot the breeze. I think after you left the conversation, I'm pretty sure Crash and I talked for almost two hours. 
<laughs> We're in the same time zone, so it's, it's not so bad. We're not, and she's three hours behind me. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, Canada's a big place. Um, this just came in my mail today. This is the new uh, bubblegum, or sorry, punk bubblegum Riot Girl zine. I've read the first issue, and I'm pretty sure I did a video review of the first one, so I, I made sure to get this. Uh, on Instagram, they're known as My Name is Mud. Check them out, really cool. Junko Runko, also fellow Canadian uh, from uh, the Prairies. Uh, lots of really cool cut and paste stuff, old fashioned type zine. I always love it. And uh, this came recently too. This is a comic zine, Misery Loves uh, Company. Good. So, nice. That's, love it. So that's, yeah, that's what I, I, uh, I think I got 11 or 12 parcels up there just waiting for me to get to. And uh, but yeah, I'm just I'm super slow with uh getting to the zine reviews at the moment. A lot of writing. I've been doing a lot of writing, trying to um. I, I want to put out something new, also some kind of new zine. I've been playing with a few ideas, kind of like a liter lit, lit, literary style one, or like a bookish kind of zine. Um, and I've just been playing with the ideas a little bit, but uh, I haven't really completed anything yet. Nice. Yeah, it's coming. It's coming. You're, you're, yeah, I know you like to take your time and really like. I don't like to, but it yeah. just happens. Revise and, and edit, and sometimes you just gotta on the page and, and let it stick, and be like, "That's what I made." Well, I kind of want to make something quite quite big, kind of quite large. So that's kind of why I was thinking about. Um, I've got to finish. I've got something finished or like nine tenths or 99% finished that I'd like to do something with. Um, but I haven't finished it yet. And that was going to be like issue, issue one of this bookish zine, but, uh, but it would be like, I don't know, like 12, 13 pages or something. Uh, I'm just, I don't know. I, I got to do it. I got to do it. You'll know what's done when it's done, you know, yeah. like you'll, You'll know. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. Um, so, uh, anything else? What should we talk about? A year, just over a year, Ryan. What? Uh... So you asked me before. What is what is one of my best moments? Do Do you have a best moment? Uh, well, it's funny because when I asked you that, I was actually thinking of Alex Rec, and then you you mentioned <laughs> it. But it's it's great. I think we were both very excited for for that chat. Like going into it, I know I was a little nervous to talk to her. Uh, knowing that, you know, even though Stolen Sharpie is a like an independently self-published book originally, how it's, you know, just knowing how many copies it's sold and here we're going to talk to her and, you know, almost a little intimidated. And I don't intimidate easy. Like, uh, I'm a big personality myself. Um, and then to talk with her and to to see just how real she is and that all just, you know, like. Everything was calm and cool after that, and and she was so cool and welcoming of us, and that's that's awesome. So that was a, a big highlight for me, knowing that uh, you know almost like this again, this this mother figure of the zine community was so welcoming of us that that, that was great. But um, yeah, talking with Crash uh, was a was a big uh, excitement for me. Um, yeah. Again, Weirdo Brigade was a lot of fun. I had so much fun talking with him with uh solash i think i i can i can say everybody you know i've really enjoyed every like, rich and, and, and nicks and Nick. uh, rich is so I, interesting uh like uh we've just we talked to so many it's 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 fantastic um when we first started these we would just record it and upload it how it is and you know chop off the ending of you know rambling in the mm -hmm. beginning and then for a while, we tried, like, editing spots out to try and get it down to, like, less than 20 minutes. Mm. And I would say the last three or four, it's just been like, fuck it. Like, like, there's no point in editing it. If you want to skip through it, you can skip through it. Uh, but there's too much good stuff in there to, to not keep and to, to pick and choose what was, what was being said. Um, so I'm, I'm glad they're staying longer because there's so much to talk about. If, if someone was watching this that was interested in doing something similar, like talking to maybe Zinesters or other people, what would you give? Do you have any kind of little small advice after a year? Like, not that we're, you know, 
we've still got a long way to go. But what have you learned in this last year is what I'm trying to say that you might. Um, always wear pants while you're doing it. I, mean, I haven't got any on at the moment. I know. So I don't know if there's well, oh, oh, uh, a Like real advice? Um, what are you doing? Uh, my camera just turned around. I, I just oh. I got <laughs> like, oh, uh, I, no real advice would be uh, like we don't we don't wing this. Like we have set questions that we typically ask, mm. and we you know we typically prep the guest on what we're going to talk about. And ask them if if there's specific zines that they want to talk about because they want people to see it. Um, so go in with a plan of of what you want to do. Um, we're winging this one right now, <laughs> but we don't normally wing it. So go in with with a plan of what you want to do and, and be prepared and have something to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got yeah. good lighting. Yeah, actually. My Make sure terrible. your Wi-Fi connection's working. Yeah, my Wi-Fi is terrible. Um, I think I would say, like, uh, really try to connect with one of, like, one kind of idea, like, uh, like what that, what the person you're interviewing with is, uh, really, is really into. I think some of our best, best, uh, chats and our best sort of interviews or whatever you would like to call them has really been when we've we've let the the person we've been talking to just really talk about what they're passionate about i think it's whoa whoa oh, okay uh well whoa what's that? <laughs> what was that i don't know oh yeah sorry <laughs> i Is today uh, tomorrow already yeah yeah some things came up and i just had to i had to bail i had to disappear so uh oh. welcome you're back. still you're still craig right yeah yeah i'm still i'm still ryan and you're okay, Craig. good. No, I'm Craig. You're Ryan. Uh, are we? Yeah, I think let so. Me yeah. My under or to, let, let me be. I'll be Craig today. I'll be Craig. You can be Ryan next time. Yeah, um, yeah. I, I could be Ryan. I can be Ryan. Okay. Sure. Um, I so, mean, you always get this, Craig. <laughs> you're, you're always Ryan. So so yeah. I guess one of us is going to be. It's fine. Be Craig. You be Craig. Okay. Just it's fine. Okay. I'll, okay. I'll be Ryan. I'll be Ryan. I'll be Ryan. Um, no. Want to be Craig? Be Craig. I'll be Ryan. It's fine. How? How about? No, I can't do it. I tried to do the Canadian about. How? <laughs> how? About? About? No, how do you say it? How do you say about? I'm not saying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not saying it, mate. <laughs> uh, all right. So yes, yes, it is the next day. Uh, we are wearing different clothes. Well, Ryan probably. No, no, he's changed. Uh, oh, what 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 T-shirt is that, Ryan? This is my Pocket Thoughts skull shirt, available at uh, tpublic.com/user/pocket-thoughts. <laughs> They're really comfortable. Ask yeah. anyone of the ten people who've bought them. <laughs> I'll tell you. I'll, I'll see if I can find them. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, uh, just to continue on from what we we're chatting about, so um. Before we were asked by that explosion. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm, I'm still a bit rattled. Uh, so we often ask the, the, the zines that we're chatting with is, is what they think the future of zines. But what, what is kind of the future of this channel over the next, you know, what we kind of want to do over the next uh, season or year? What do you think, Ryan? That's a really good question because um, there's so much more to zines than just zines, right? And, you know... Uh, Every zine has its own sort of zine community, and you know, then there's the worldwide zine community and sort of zine inspiration. The show falls into that. Um, but I don't know about you, but I hope that in the next year we get to chat down with you know some people who run independent bookstores that sell zines, and you know, maybe some uh, micro uh, presses and you know, publishing houses and things like that that publish zines, uh, and um. Uh, people who run zine fairs and organize the mm -hmm. events and, and that sort of stuff just to get those other perspectives about like you know how do you run a zine fair how do you get your zine into a local bookshop how, you know and what kind of hurdles to overcome and you know how to not be shy about pitching your zines to people and, and that sort of thing to get them out there so i think there's a lot of uh good knowledge out there that um can be shared with with all of us and this i think we have a great platform to do that 
Yeah, I think so. And I'd like to chat with people that are that are making like also like different art books and different like um handmade books. I think there's there's like you say, there's a there's there's a big there's a massive community and there's little sections of all this community and, and little subsections and crossovers that I think um that maybe we could can use this this church this show as a bit of a vehicle to try to get to some of those places and uh, maybe fill in some of those blanks that people have about questions that they want answered and things like that. So uh, I'm really excited about this next, uh, I guess, this next year coming forward. Yeah, because I know that even I've uh, I've thought about you know starting like a zine fair, like a yearly <laughs> zine fair. But I don't know the first thing about doing it other than you know you rent a hall and you invite zinesters to come to it. But there's got to be way more to it than that, and it would be it would be just peachy and lovely to pick someone's brain and you know get all the the good meat and potatoes and gravy of it all to to sort it out and stuff and you know where to look for for folks in your own area outside of you know mm -hmm. the global internet space of it all right yeah yeah and even like well i've i've often thought about a distro you know i'm kind of all the way over here in japan and there's not a lot of english zinesters over here um so, uh, you know, I've I've kind of thought about that as well, and I don't really know where to start, and I don't I don't really have the time for it. Like, I am very quite kind of busy with a lot of other little things, so it's something definitely way on the back burner. But it is something I have thought about, and I'm not really sure where I'd start with that. Um, you know, and that's something I'd like to pick someone's brain about. Like, it's something that me and you don't really do. You're just a self distro yourself, and and I kind of just send some stuff out through the mail when someone decides to buy a thing. <laughs> which is I know um, pre-COVID, you had you had this great idea for the uh, the traveling mm -hmm. coffee and zine library, right? Which yeah. which I thought yeah. was really clever. You know, who doesn't want to have a cup of coffee and you know while you're enjoying it, flip through some zines and see what's going on in the rest of the world. Uh, you know, unfortunately, we know in the COVID world that we live in right now, that's just not a feasible yeah. option. Or for some areas, most areas to do that. Um, but it's still a great idea. There's lots of different uh, ventures and paths to, to get zines out there. That being one of them, a distro is one, a zine fair that we've talked about mm -hmm. is one. Even if you think of Rich over at uh, Faro Publication and the zine vending machine, he's not the first person to do a zine vending machine. But I know he's super pumped about getting that somewhere, right? There are other zine vending machines uh, around the world which are cool. Uh, but if you don't know about it, you don't know about it. So, like, I think it'd be great if we could talk to some people who do these thinking outside of the box zine things. Um, there's a guy, who, there's a vegan restaurant that has a zine library inside it. Uh, the owner of the restaurant runs a zine library. But I think, you know, we could probably also just chat to some people about zine libraries things like that um yeah so i'm really i'm really looking forward to to seeing what we can uh what we can find yeah i know down in uh, new zealand at one point there was like a traveling zine library uh by myrtle chickpea and uh that was that was really cool that that was a few years ago i don't know if she's still doing that um but Maybe like it was it. it would move around and set up for for people to read the zines which was really cool so i think i think uh I think we've got some some interesting topics to to delve into in this this coming year, our second year. Yeah, and uh, if you're watching this and you do know of someone that, that has something like that or does something very interesting in the zine space, uh, leave you know leave a comment down below and, and just let us know. We you know we'd really like to check that out. We'll follow that up. <laughs> Every time anybody on YouTube and, and when we do it, and I go, oh, their information is going to be down below. I'm like. You're all looking at my crotch. <laughs> well, it's actually funny because usually we have three people. So often when like one of us does that, like you're just, you're just up, you know, you're, you're just in the next box above or something like that. Or like the last video I pointed like that way to somebody and they were like, I was at the edge. Like it's, it's, it never, we it never, never works out. No, That's we might as well just point up. Yeah. It's, it's, it's up there. <laughs> um, yeah, so uh, thanks, thanks for this, Ryan. This was cool. This was cool just to catch up and and, and see what's cool. going on. Yeah, I I have so much fun doing this. I really do. Um, 
getting to talk to different people from around the world is it's uh, it's a privilege. It really is. It's a privilege yeah. and a pleasure. Um, the fact that you know, Craig, you and I have never actually met face to face, but we've been doing this for a year. I know, isn't it? How, how cool is that? Like when you think about, it. I was trying to explain this to my kids when I was like, "Yeah, I've got a phone call to do with uh, my buddy in Japan," and they were like, "You have a friend who lives in Japan?" And I'm like, "Yeah," and they were like, "What?" And I'm like, "Yeah, we've actually never like been in the same room together." No, never, <laughs> never. And, and they're like, "Well, he's not really your friend," and I'm like, "Yeah, he is." <laughs> I know but it's how, weird. Like you couldn't do this twenty years ago, you know. Like the technology wasn't there, and and the ability wasn't there, and and now it is. So let's all take full advantage of it. Yeah, that is it. Is it? Sorry, yeah, that is crazy. We've never met, and yet for a year we've been we've interviewed what is it, thirteen people? Did you say something like thirteen for like fourteen? Yeah, yeah. And we we'll never. I think after we come up with this idea, actually, you know, like. Uh, after we came up with this idea and uh, we had our first, our first video chat and we were like, and it was a bit weird. And I was like, oh, look, I thought we would just better practice just to see how we were because we, we we both said yes before we'd even ever chatted to each other like this. Yeah. Well, you know what they say? It's a small world after all. It's a small world after all. It's no, not not metal they, for you. Did they? Uh, I'm, I wasn't going to sing. I'm terrible at singing. Do they play that at Disneyland too? Because they do that here in Japan. Ah, oh, well, they they play that in Japan, and and that's just what I think of. Maybe they do. Maybe they, I don't know. Okay. Well, anyway, uh, we should wrap this up. Anything else you want to add, Ryan? No, just that I'm I'm thankful and super happy that we get to keep doing this. Yeah, me too. Me too. I hope we can do it just as often. Like we had a very quiet period, but um, with the summer coming up, I think we should be able to, you know, uh, keep, you know, do as much as we can. Um, and I think expanding out of the zine world will be will be also uh, not out of the zine world, but in different pockets of the zine world will be very very interesting for 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 you know me, you, and I, I hope for you those watching. And like Craig said, if you do know someone that you would love to see interviewed on this show, tag them down below so we can yeah. get in touch with them. I mean, we've got lots of zinesters lined up to be on the show, but if there's someone who is super interesting, we want them on here. We want to showcase them and feature them because uh, that's what this is all about is, is sharing the zines out and about and promoting it and getting people to see their stuff. So hit like, hit subscribe, comment below. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Find us everywhere. Just you know, do or don't, don't, no, don't do that. Just, just watch the show and enjoy it. We, you know, yeah. we're, we're gonna, be, we're gonna be making it anyway. <laughs> we're yeah. gonna be making it anyway. Uh, whether there's five people watching or fifteen thousand people watching, we don't. We're gonna be making it. And if no one's gonna get interviewed, we'll just interview each other <laughs> or ourselves. So, Ryan, what if? <laughs> well, Ryan, let me tell you all about. Pocket Thoughts number 35 and a half, coming <laughs> September 2023. Actually, I did watch the first first time we, we did this, and uh, you were talking about Pocket Thoughts issue number... N was the newest nine one. Nine or ten. Yeah, yeah, I think it was N. Yeah. yeah, I watched it last night. What, what were you up to? What are you up to now? Uh, Daddy's Dating a Dirty Hoe. Yeah, but what we already talked number? about it. Oh, uh, Pocket Thoughts number Sweet 16 just came out. 16. So you've done like one every two months in the last year. Nice. Yeah, I, I go on a, a flip-flop schedule for myself. So I do a Pocket Thoughts and then I do like a random zine and then I do a Pocket Thoughts and then I do a random zine. And so it's okay. usually every other month a Pocket Thoughts comes out. I think I put one story out in the whole last year. <laughs> yeah, but your stuff is probably better than mine. <laughs> no, no, no. no. Let's not get into that conversation. Um, that's that's like quant quantity quality. I hate that, qu that conversation. Is crazy. Uh, okay, then. thanks, thanks all. Until uh, next time. You wave slower. Ooh. It's a small, 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 small world. Good night. Okay. Good night. <coughs> okay. That was fun.
Welcome, welcome, Craig, to the casting couch. <laughs> <laughs> uh...